A very good morning to you and welcome to Captured by Women. My name is Abna Tebi and I'm here with my co-presenters Priscilla, Susan and Nanama. As usual, we'll be weighing in on some topical issues making the headlines during the week. This week, what are we looking at? Quickly, we will be looking at developments in the Ghana Police Service. And here we are looking at two things. One is the dismissal of COP Patrick Timbilla following investigations into some recruitment scandal that rocked the service sometime in 2014. We'll also look at the retirement of Mr. John Kudalo as IGP and his replacement with um, COP Asante Epietu. How is the Ghana Police Service going to look like with the leadership of um, Mr. Asante Epietu? We'll also look at the vetting process so far, ministerial nominees being vetted by the Vetting Committee of Parliament. How has the committee itself done and how have the nominees fared so far in the process? We'll be looking at all these issues. And then lastly, we'll look at the rating of members of parliament of the sixth parliament of the fourth republic. Um, a report that has been put out shows that some parliamentarians didn't do so well, others did well. We'll be looking at these issues as they have been reported in the media. So this is what we have lined up for discussion this morning. We'll take a quick break. We'll be back to look at the topics in detail. But let's say thank you to our sponsors, um, Grand Rice Company, producers of Leap Tomato Paste, and Tinnatet Herbal, producers of Tinnatet Tomac Mixture and Venicare. We'll take a quick break. We'll be right back. Welcome back on Spin. This morning we are looking at the dismissal of COP Patrick Timbilla. Um, the former director of human resource at the Ghana Police Service. Now, you do remember that sometime in 2014, uh, some scandal involving recruitment of um, police personnel to the service rocked the Ghana Police Service, and Patrick Timbilla um, was interdicted. And subsequently, investigations were launched into the alleged recruitment scam. This week, we hear that Patrick Timbilla has been dismissed. Now, questions have come up as to why it took so long for um, COP Patrick Timbilla to be dismissed, given that some other people who were also implicated in this scandal had been dismissed way before this year. And these are raising questions about why it seems we seem to go easy on certain people in high offices in the land or on the land. So ladies, this is what we're looking at. Yeah. COP Timbilla, after how many years now? Is it three years? Since yeah, 2014, mm -hmm. eventually, um, the Ghana Police Service is telling us that the investigations have come to an end and they are now dismissing him. Obviously, they, 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 they found some adverse findings against him. And questions are up. Mm -hmm. Why did it take so long? Well, mm -hmm. um, they say the wheels of justice grind slowly. So I guess, um, we should be lucky if they've grinded at all. Mm. Um, I think that generally, um, you know, there are many investigations that take place that we never even see the, the light of day. And so for this one to come out now, I know that something has been done. Um, we also, I think that the police tend to shield their own, mm. you know, uh, and uh, You've alluded to that, that, okay, maybe because he's such a big person, mm -hmm. it took so long. I guess, yes, if, if the person is, is that big, you would um, be a lot more cautious in, 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 in ensuring that um, you don't um, easily um, harm their reputation. Because it, it may not necessarily even be the loss of revenue or the loss of money, but more of a loss of reputation. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I think that in, in some of these things, you would tread m much more cautiously if the person is the, how would I put it, a, a supposed <laughs> big man. So then we are making uh, distinctions uh, between... No, no, we are, we are not making distinctions. <laughs> we are saying the realities of life, mm -hmm. okay? That, I mean, uh, you, you know, uh, that's the reality in life. I mean, if somebody were to steal a goat, you will be in, um, hauled in front of the court and then in the next minute he being sentenced to his... Uh, of course, and 
I mean, that doesn't require as much investigation as it would something like this, mm. you know. And um, I, I, you know, he, you'd also find out that, um, you know, for somebody who has been in the service for so long, he may have his own loyalist there who may not necessarily let things move as fast as they are. But the important thing is that we've come to this mm. conclusion and, and that uh, and, and I think the service believes that, you know, uh, he, he didn't do the right thing and as such he's been dismissed. Or, um, I, I think we talked about whether he was, if you've been dismissed, whether he will get his pension, mm. he'll probably lose all of that. But mm. more likely, it will it will be a, a, you know a, a loss of reputation mm. than more of a loss of revenue. Right. I mean, the time factor. Well, people may be concerned, but mm. I, I am looking at due process and the question, like mm. you're saying, whether or not due process was followed. And to the extent that it was followed, then yes, it may take ten years or whatever. But then, finally, a decision is made after complying with all the processes or procedure that the police service has developed within its own service. So at the end of the day, it's about due process. And so the time really for me is not an issue, but what I wouldn't want to be the case is that, yes, because he is maybe of a certain standing in there, then we needed to perhaps um, um, modify the process to suit, you know, whereas for others, then it becomes an animal found thing. I know there's a reality on the ground, but we should also uh, be, sh be, be, be aware that yeah. nobody is, everybody is equal under the law. Nobody is above the law. Yeah. I mean, Abi, when it comes to his, his ranking and um, his status in the police force, I'm thinking that's why ca caution was necessary because for someone to have risen the ranks and we didn't detect any issue of fraudulent behavior, you know, he's passed through the various, various ranks. So, of course, to, you know, indict <laughs> someone of his person, you know, status his character then it means that you know you need to take you know extra take care. time <laughs> and you know take mm. extra care because what did they miss all this while he has been in the police force is this now that he's, he's going to do up. something has he done something in the past for well, you know he has a very clean record and so he makes it all the more dumbfounding that's you know he he's Maybe stained indicted. with this this you know this scandal mm. hmm. it, it's it's i mean two ways it's difficult we appreciate what the police has gone through to finally come out with this finding or finally firing him. But for me, like, I mean, it came up in all our discussions that what then really distinguishes the processes that are tailored for someone who is an ordinary person, as it may seem, against someone who has a status. Because um, let's get the facts straight. For someone who even steals a goat, as um, Susan was earlier on alleging to, it's still going to you know um it's the same procedure his I reputation mean. is going mm -hmm. to be harmed somewhere even if he's a non-entity even in his family i mean it's going to be a reputation to the whole family someone will be affected either ways you know so i feel that if immediately you could give a verdict on those other people and two years down the line before this man receives his verdict you don't know what within these two years these other people have had to go through i just feel that we should cut down whatever the status is if you've done something wrong let equal merits be given to all of us let's set it as soon as possible because in those few years that we were wasting i feel we wasted his time as well <laughs> because then if he's home he, i mean he's not part of the service but, 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 but you're waiting to pass a ruling on him as well what went in, in there we don't know his arguments this is just one of these issues it. but oftentimes you know? we, we know of cases where once an mp or once a politician or once someone of high standing is involved we turn we to immediately slowly. yes we, we <laughs> take a slower process so i'm just thinking I'm just saying that moving forward, we're all Ghanaians. Whatever it is, the baseline is that we're all under the law. So maybe these processes should be tailored, yes, to suit your reputation or whatsoever, but it should be hastened so that everyone receives their punishment in due time. I don't see why two years before he gets whatever. I agree. Someone will say because he was home and he wasn't really working as a police officer, then he's... He's serving some form of a punishment. But it's not enough to say that we were following process. So if for two years we forgot about the case and we were here, then nothing happens. 
you know so i just feel that if a situation comes up be it of high standing low standing non-entity all of us should have a verdict being issued about around the same time no, but the yeah. investigations Wait, are different yeah. you cannot you cannot if somebody goes to I, steal I, a I coat, find, why the, should the, it be different some, it is different because it takes but a lot really more ask, time yeah. no i mean it takes a lot more time because to, to find out where because the, the person's hand may not necessarily be uh, very obvious in but the, in the, in the thing. But so they have messages. They have things. They have well, I mean, things you, you pointing say, no, in that I mean, direction. She's a lawyer. Things are not always what they seem. So, so and the truth don't always, um, facts don't always make up the truth. Susan, so, you're no, not getting so, my point. No, no, what no, I'm no. saying, the, the facts, facts of never the matter made is that the truth. They were you, able you, to, you, you know, you, arrest uh, those um, people uh, at that uh, setting. The lawyer is arrested. Don't you have murder cases that can go on? For, for that's years. That's that's why I so that's, 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 that's what I'm saying. For that. me, my concern is whether or not due process was followed. Yes. But Abna, so my question followed, is, my problem is when we say due processes, how different is someone who is of regular standing involved in this scam he we get evidence immediately to arrest him very well, I don't, I don't, you don't know, know. you don't know anybody of the same okay, yes. no, but you don't know. the report okay, came out they had investigation they had findings you are not to it okay, let me just give an example for mm. instance if i task someone to mm. go and steal the goat the one you catch in the act, in the act really. is likely to be jailed earlier almost or prosecuted almost mm. immediately. Mm. But trying to investigate to find that indeed I was the one that sent, because his Would signature they say, well, you have the signatures, you could say that somebody signed the documents or whatever. You say you have text messages, you can say that his phone was tapped. There's so many things, Chrissy, like Susan I, I, said, I, I, if I mean, his hand is not directly in the crime, it, it means be difficult that more to due diligence has to you know, go I, into I, the I investigation. Mean, I could understand, but the due diligence doesn't have to take two years. You know, it can take, it has can to take be more than two years. Which is unfair for the person for who? who, because like you said, the person who you catch doing it, Really, maybe he never even had the idea. Is it, I'm, I'm Just I'm because someone to, I'm is... I'm unable to even because comment don't know on the Because facts. we don't know the facts as, present, as were presented to the committee or the team that did the investigations. Yeah. But the point is this, that first assumption, one, is that mm -hmm. nobody is above the law. So then we assume mm -hmm. that the same standard is applied to all. And that's why I said earlier on that I don't mm -hmm. want to believe that his took forever because of his rank or his ranking in the service. I don't want to believe that. Mm -hmm. But what makes me happy is that at the end of the day, regardless of the time, the they, were, they came, they out. concluded. Yeah. They concluded with their investigations and then they found him. I That's mean, they found adverse um, 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 Abby, findings I'm not, against I'm not, him. I'm not being... Um, <laughs> Second side about this particular issue, but I'm just saying it's a trend. It tends to happen often in our society, give examples. which we should move away from. No, so give examples. I can't give categorical but examples then, then because I don't have the facts that. here with me. So but we do know cases. I mean, please. Okay, so we let's do let's know no, so cases. Give where example. Example. Let's look at, but I just think moving I, 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 I on, get, we should I get come up that. with some Lot, some time frames within which these cases are ruled on. Of course, of course. You, you have a time frame. It would be difficult to be say to do you should have it within a certain period. Because you would expect that everything that is needed and relevant will be considered. So rushing it for I mean, me, I don't think it would be the best thing. Rushing you know, it is because my you may issue. rush a case. Right now, we cannot I mean, you, can, you can rush a case and then go and then and, uh, a Ladies, guilty person my, will my walk off. Final so and then you can not rushing it. Do due diligence. But I think but but at this point, can, yes, yes, I, I don't have the time. time. I can't even make we can, that. We've had issues even in this election time. We didn't have cases like this. IGP Kodala is going out with the new person coming in. What are your expectations? Perhaps no scams that have been had. <laughs> and quicker <laughs> investigation. A better and more things. effective mm -hmm. police unit for Ghana. I think, yeah, moving mm. forward, that's the most important Very well. Thing. We, we need to wrap up on the conversation here. This is it for Spin this morning. We'll take a break. When we come back, we're going to Big Bang One. Just keep watching. Welcome back, lovely viewers. So on Big Bang One, we're speaking to Dr. Rashid Rahman, Executive Director for the African Center of Parliamentary Affairs. We're discussing with him the ongoing vetting process, how the committee is doing, and how the designate themselves are also doing. 
Then we would also ask him of the rating that has come out on how parliamentaries, or sorry, parliamentarians have done over the past four years, especially now that their ex gratia is being doled out to them. We want to understand how deserving they are of this money. So um, stay tuned. Dr. Rashid Draman, hello. Good afternoon and welcome to Captured by Women. Good afternoon. Thank you, sir, for joining us. So we're asking two questions. Um, how the committee who are vetting the ministerial designates are doing and how the nominees themselves are faring, how fit they are for their roles. And we're also um, going to ask the question on the rating that has come out on how the members of parliament of the Sith Republic um, fared. So these are the two questions we have for you, sir. Yes, um, I'm kind of concerned. Uh, I think uh, legitimate others are not. Hmm. Um, but I want to focus on maybe the us. For instance, I think the, the, the ministers designate are willing and ready to answer the question. And, uh, and I hope that uh, going forward, the chair of the committee would uh, just give a little bit more space to uh, the ministers designate to answer the questions that are being posed to them, provided um, those questions do not breach subsidia. So, sir, so far, what do you make of the line of questioning um, from the committee to the designates? Are they out of order or are they appropriate? Well, maybe not out of order might not be the right word to use. Uh, perhaps whether the, the questions speak to the relevant issues in terms of what the minister designated is going to be doing or she is approved by parliament. Mm, we, we Most of the questions are really, I mean, not targeted enough. Mm -hmm. And most of the questions have been asked mainly because members just have the opportunity to ask questions and not because those questions uh, are Sorry. trying to dig deep and prove the competence of the minister designate or otherwise in terms of the portfolio that he or she will be handling. Mm -hmm. And I think it speaks to the general lack of preparation, I believe. Because, for instance, it's not everyone that, that needs to ask a question. Mm. And, uh, and it's not, um, you know, everyone that also has to ask three questions. Mm. I mean, we could have situations where maybe if the minister designate is coming from um, uh, the area of finance or area of energy, I mean, the various caucuses could organize themselves, and maybe one or two people ask the questions. Mm. That way, they can probe deeper, and they can maybe ask targeted questions mm. than some of the things that we are hearing. Some even today I was reading mm -hmm. uh, in the newspaper, and there was a comment about what does somebody's primary education have to do with the, the role that he or she is going to play in a particular ministry. And I think these are some of the things that were characteristic of the questions that were being asked by honorable members. Hmm. Let me ask you, um, how important are CVs to this um, vetting process? Because um, we've seen that the CVs, um, there have been too many, um, if for want of a better word, lapses, you know, with um, um, nominees' CVs. and. Uh, it's as if it's a given that they'll be approved anyway, so CVs don't matter. Well, I mean, that's the thing. And that's why we need to, as a country, take some of these things serious. The past government was criticized extensively. People were asking the question, are there really people in the flagstaff house who were vetting some of the CVs before they were sent over? Mm -hmm. I mean, you would think that at least there's a unit that would collect these CVs because uh, I believe the, the, the president considers um, individuals for various portfolios on the basis of what they say they have done in their lives. Mm -hmm. And it's the CV that is uh, the best indicator of, of this. Do we have 
in a unit within government that makes sure that these things are formatted properly, do we have a standard format in which these are presented, so that we avoid all these embarrassing lapses. Mm -hmm. But, sir, to, to your question, I think they've, the committee has often commented that they did give um, nominees a format to follow. However, certain parameters were not clearly stated. So, you know, based on what the person thought the committee wanted, they provided. But I do agree that there have been some lapses, which maybe in due time they will correct and sub resubmit. Well, I mean, if somebody, if somebody has presented a CV that is not properly formatted or in the right, I mean, uh, way that the committee wanted it, mm. I think the committee should not bless the person. The person should go and do the writing before yeah. it shows up or she shows up before the committee. Mm -hmm. I think then that way everybody will take the work of the committee serious. Very well. Because that is appearing before parliament. And uh, when you are called by parliament, it's serious business. But sir, to that effect, do you have any fair idea of how long um, or when the committee gives the nominees the format within which to produce? Because on the first day this vetting was done, I know um, the nominees apologized when com the committee raised these issues because they said they didn't have ample time within which to correct. I just want to know if you have a fair idea of when they received the format. No, I don't know. Very well. Thank but you. I think uh, it is all supposed to be part of our processes. Mm. I mean, this is, this is uh, the governance of our country. And everybody who is involved in this should take it serious because, as you rightly said, I think it is because of the fact that most people know whatever I go and do at that, at that committee. Eventually, my party has the numbers, mm. and I'm going to get a nod. Mm. And, and so for that matter, maybe people don't they really adequately prepare mm. to show up before the committee. And we need to move beyond this. Mm. Very much. Following up on that point, that the, 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 the thing about numbers, I just need to have your opinion on this. Do you think we are getting full value or the full value of what the vetting process is supposed to, 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 to do or give to our whole, the whole process of you No, know. we are not. Mm. We are not. Because, you know, like I was saying, most of the questions are completely off. I mean, the issues of relevance. And secondly, you have 25 members sitting in a room and uh, we can't, I mean, agree that the 25 members have knowledge that spans from energy, finance, agriculture, and so on and so forth. Yet, you have all the members asking questions mm -hmm. um, to these nominees, when really some of them, I believe, um, do not have any specialization in that area. Mm. Mm. And that is why you sometimes see the questions bordering on generalities mm. and not maybe the specifics of the portfolio for which okay. the minister uh, designates, I mean, uh, uh, has been nominated by the president. Great. I, I have a, a more substantive question to ask, but I, I, I would need to follow up on this one. And perhaps if you could tell us any irrelevant, quote-unquote, irrelevant question you think you have witnessed so far in the process, just for us to know exactly what it is you're talking about. Well, no, I mean, uh, I told you earlier that I read in the Daily Graphic today, mm. a column by Elizabeth Ohini, where she mentioned the fact that people were asked about their primary education. What, what has that got to do with what they are going to do mm. now? Mm. So, I mean, that's an example for you. It's the public domain. Right. And speaking about the generalization or the fact that all 25 members of the committee don't necessarily have the subject area expertise, I would want us to look at that in relation to the nominees themselves. Are you of the opinion or do you hold that view that people nominated to certain ministerial portfolios or positions should necessarily have subject area expertise so that, for instance, if you are appointed or nominated for the energy ministry, you should at all cost have some subject area expertise with regards to energy or um, power or, you know, if it's mm. agriculture, you should be, for instance, an agriculturist or an agricultural economist, for instance. Well, maybe in some specific sectors, 
it might make sense and it might help. But generally, if we have a civil service machinery that is working and that is efficient, mm. I mean, the ministers get briefed all the time and they have technical people who do work for them. So it's not necessary that the person has expertise in that area. Uh, but if you do have, I think it helps. It mm. helps in your appreciation of the issues, in, your, uh, in the way you can understand uh, the issues and so on. Mm. Very well. I, I would also want to go back to... Okay, yes, prisoner, go okay, ahead. So, so you're saying it's more of trying to ascertain the leadership qualities mm. of these ministers, not specifically their expertise in the areas they are being nominated to go and man. Sorry? So you're saying um, the vetting process has got to ascertain the leadership qualities of these, um, the ministerial designates as against their expertise in the specific areas they are they have been nominated to go and man. No, I I didn't say that. Okay. I think I only said um, the question was whether we should have the expertise. Specific yeah. Areas. And I said it doesn't necessarily have to be so because mm. if we have a civil service machinery that is working effectively, the ministers will get briefed. They have technical people who will be doing work for them, but. I also added that if you have uh, knowledge and capacity in the field in which you have passed. Sure. So, I mean, in addition to being expertise, we are looking at their leadership abilities as well, if, if I'm right. Yes, definitely. The leadership mm -hmm. abilities. Is yeah, because uh, um, on that yeah, score. Leadership, yeah. Mm. Please go ahead. So I'm, I'm just saying that wherever you are going, you are going to need people. Mm. And I think uh, that quality is, is critical. Mm. I mean, that is not something that can be dispensed of. The technical skill can be dispensed of because uh, maybe you have technical people who are going to be working for you and who are, have been in the ministry over the years. Mm. Right. But the responsibility for running the institution is not something that you can delegate. Mm. Okay. Right. Doc, a, 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 a quick one before we go. Um, we do know that our politics is, is quite adversarial. And some have said it plays out in a number of ways. Have you seen this adversarial nature of our politics playing out in the demeanor of the nominees before the, um, the, the vetting committee? <laughs> So, I mean, who specifically are you referring to? Nobody in particular. I'm just <laughs> trying to take, have your take on the issue because some perhaps have come up as, um, if you like, a bit haughty or it's, um, they perhaps are trying to prove a point. And this is something that is being talked about in various circles. So I just want to see if that sort of demeanor is as a result of that adversarial nature of our politics. Well, I mean, our politics is, is uh, as should be expected, adversarial. But uh, you can't deal with that by being arrogant or showing a demeanor that, that conveys a sense of uh, the fact that you, you think you know it more than yeah. everybody else that is sitting in, I mean, uh, around the table. Yeah. I mean, so all I would say is that, you know, our politics culture, and I think uh, whoever uh, the nominee is, only should hmm. he should as, as well be have in mind that I think humility, humility things, and it's very important. Hmm. Very uh, well. Okay. So, and um, we would like to know about Odikro release and ratings on the MPs' performance in the past Parliament. We want to find your view on this. How relevant is this in our current setting? And how do you think the ratings will help MPs to perform? Well, uh, it's relevant because it's like, uh, as I was telling some of your colleagues today, is somebody has to watch the watchman. Mm. And that's what uh, we have in, in this assessment by Odi Crow. Mm. I mean, they are the guardians of our democracy, ensuring transparency and accountability. You need someone to, uh, once in a while, take stock of how they have performed, particularly because we have given them a mandate and they are paid to do, I mean, uh, to execute that mandate. So it is important that we have an assessment in terms of 
do they really sit in that house and work when they are being paid? Mm -hmm. Or uh, they go doing something else and at the end of the month they claim salaries? Okay, mm. but can I but ask on a quick question? Yeah. Um, with, and, I mean, um, these are um, MPs in certain situations, we don't know how they vote. We have the, the whip system, you know, um, the party goes what it wants it to go and when you're equipped into going into that does it really matter how they perform i mean because uh, we know for a fact that in certain constituencies any monkey in a suit will be voted for um you know depending on the party so does it really matter well maybe that's why you have some of the results that you have <laughs> and uh, and i believe and i hope we'll get to a point someday where people will really be voted to parliament on the basis of competence, on the basis of what they have to offer to their people, and not because it's voter region and I'm, and I'm LDC and I can win, or it's a Shanti region and I'm NPP and I can win, or it's Northern region and I'm NDC, I can win, and so on. Mm. Mm. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> we, we would like to thank you, sir, um, for joining us in this discussion. No, we appreciate the time you spent with us. Thank you. All right. Okay, bye. Thank you. Ladies. <laughs> Interesting discussions. We'll take a quick break. We'll be by back. Stay tuned, please. <laughs> Welcome back, lovely viewers. So in-house, we'll have our take on the rating that has come on how the MPs have fared, as well as the um, vetting process ongoing. We'll have our own take in-house. Ladies? Ah, well, me, I, I want to start with the rating of the MPs. Right. I mean, first of all, I would want to commend the organizers or, I mean, whoever did mm. that, uh, Odi Crow, they've done a good job. But I am not so much convinced about how scientific it is, and therefore the conclusions that have been drawn, I really don't know how they arrived at that because I, of course I don't have the benefits of all the details of the report it's over a hundred pages mm -hmm. but then I have their fact sheets that I mean talks about the findings mm -hmm. and the findings for me they're looking at for instance on legislation they are saying 52 MPs representing 18.9 percent of the 275 MPs contributed amendments to a certain number of bills right and really oh that goodness. seems to be the substance of it um, m my question then is I mean when you're looking at contribution to amendments you don't expect every <laughs> single member of parliament to, to make a contribution contribute. and then it will be a waste of time if somebody echoes or re-echoes what somebody already has said Th there's no so for me you know th i don't see this as an indicator for, for of mm -hmm. how well an mp performs mm -hmm. and all of that because let's not forget too there's an mp the, the mps have a fund a development fund rights for their uh, constituencies mm -hmm. and all we didn't even interrogate or oh find gosh. out from their constituents what sort of engagement they've had, you know. So I think there are a number of things that I, I find worrying about this. But again, like I'm saying, kudos to them. They've done a good job. Perhaps it's, it's, it's a good attempt, Ab but Ab let's see how well, this Let me ask can. you, I mean, what are MPs supposed to do? Are they legislators or their development officers? They, they have about three roles, legislative functions, mm -hmm. deliberative, and of course, they have to supervise the executive. So then they in ensuring that there are checks and balances. So really, so. The, 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 the fact that they have a fund is not their core function. But that has that, been that, an that, add that, on. Uh, that has been we an need, add on we need not forget that of the misconception of But uh, we have institutionalized what? it. Okay. We've given so them that fund. fine. But I mean, if you were going to give marks for it, it, it may not necessarily be where, where people Susan, get the highest marks. Susan, to the extent that they one of those funds no, is them, because we need to judge them by how they use it. I yes, think but, that is but they themselves have been complaining about the amount of that fund, that it's, it is barely enough to, to, but barely to, enough, to, but to, to do, to do anything substantial. So, so, so that, that, I mean, may not necessarily be the biggest thing. Not the biggest, but it will be a factor. Yeah, but I mean, if let's say that if you are allocating 10% to it, you still have 90% out there. Somebody may get 10 over 10 there and still perform badly there. All I'm and saying so is there are little things that should have been, but for you know. Her, otherwise, it seems like that is yes. important. In yes. Yes. I mean, on, on, on this whole scoring, um, what, what, what was the expectation of MPs? Who gave them the mandate? The people who voted for the MPs, for what reason did they vote? Do we hear the MPs on the campaign trail? 
they say certain things that is what they're going to do that allows their people to give them the mandate yeah. so you might as well want to check with their people on how they perform some of them have been re-elected mind yeah. you so the promises they go on making does not include that they would be making sure that the right legislature is passed in, in, in cabinet or in parliament. I don't hear that. We hear, I'll come and do the road, I'll mm -hmm. come and do this, which attests to the fact that, yes, how well did they use the developmental fund? fund? You know, how accountable are they to their people? Their people like them. And as long as they like them, they'll continue to vote for them. So we need to ask our questions, on what basis did we give them the mandate in the first place? We've come out to measure them today. Yeah. Yeah. But what was the measuring criteria when we gave them the mandate? Exactly. And so we have to defer to the people who voted for them. They voted for them because they like them. Yeah. And today you're saying they so. were not speaking in and power. And perhaps I mean, the people you know, you know that, that they the have a certain thing, function yes. to play yeah. aside that. Which is Definitely. So, it, so it that requires that 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 we must at that level as well. Yes. Because then we go on, we can't say that we are doing the wrong thing, so it's okay <laughs> to no, continue okay. doing the wrong thing. It's not okay, but there might be a KPI for which you are being measured. Right. And definitely yeah. one of them was not that they will be speaking in Parliament. If you heard them on a campaign trail, where the people gave them their mandate, what were the things they were mm. saying? So this is when we have to engage the process and say, I hey, agree. you need somebody who is going to make laws, mm -hmm. pass bills, and et cetera, et cetera. So look out for somebody who has the well with that. Mm. We have people saying, oh, he can't speak English. Well, English, na ebedi. They still vote for them anyway. Yeah. So we really, we have to reorient the people right from the squad but don't come out with a scorecard when they finish seven what does that do for anybody i mean I, I, I was just going to hinge on Prissy's comment because to say that the person didn't speak in parliament at all so i mean he scores zero when it comes to or didn't amend the I bill and all that you. there are people we should take into consideration people's personalities someone may not utter a word but the work he does in his parliament mm -hmm. i mean his constituency is very appreciable mm -hmm. and to them they are satisfied with him and rightly so they will vote for him the exactly. next time so if you ask me to vote for an mp not based on what he's going to do to amend a bill, whatever, whatever. I know it's part of what they're supposed to do. Right. But for that particular MP, that may not be his primary goal. Right. His goal may be more focused on developing his mm. people or right. his constituents. Yeah. You know, so I think all the facets should be put exactly. together so to make it more yes. and comprehensive. Yes. And, and, and their role in the various being, committees as well, right. I think mm. we didn't give yeah. But you see, but yes, committee, yeah, you see that, but the legislation is also development. Yes, but Susan, I mean, I, I think we want to make it that, that it's not development. It's very important. It is, this, it's just development. True. You but understand? Perhaps, I mean, let's take the domestic violence bill, okay? It's legislation, mm -hmm. but it is important. It's important to the development of a particular gender. So let's not think that. So I mean, when we when we we need to look at we need to look at it and balance it. Yes, we need to come to what is the right thing and shape the thinking. And not say that because we've gone the wrong way, we must continue to go the wrong way. Not at all. But you see, to even touch on the legislation, I think just leaving it at amendments to bills is not enough no. you need exactly. to look at the quality of the bills or uh, the laws that are actually passed uh, because see yeah. we recently had this pa <laughs> presidential transition act i mean so many provisions in there were inconsistent with uh, the constitution exactly. you ask yourself exactly. who were who sitting in there exactly and so, so again, you know those people it's not just about the amendments I mean, we better. don't even know yeah. what amendments they proposed exactly. and whether or not it was consistent with the constitution or even not favorable. so just leaving it at that face value for me i think we should go deeper Thank you. And then look at the institution as a whole <laughs> and how well they have been able to keep the executive in check. Yeah. I think they have yeah. fared yeah. badly, honestly. <laughs> the, 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 the but six but parliaments, a, with so many bills, so many agreements, has done a certificate of emergency. Anyway, That's ladies, we, we can keep going on and on about this, but finally we have to bring this show to a wrap. We know you've enjoyed it. First up, we were discussing the retirement of IGP John Kudalo and the appointment of the new IGP COP David Asante Apietu. And also we touched a bit on the COP Timbila who has finally been fired um, concerning the recruitment scam that occurred in 2014. Next up, we talked to Dr. Rashid Draman, who is the executive director of the As African Center for Parliamentary Affairs. We touched on the ratings rolled out by Odikro concerning MPs' performance in the last parliament. And then finally, we touched on the vetting committee and its appropriateness and certain things that came up during the vert and it has been an interesting show we would like to thank our sponsors for enabling us to carry out this show and bring it to you every saturday as promised we do want to say goodbye for now it's been nanama priscilla abana and suzanne on this show same time next week see you